I'm going to talk about tonight, I'm going to talk about fundamental faith. Um, I had like a lot of things that were on my heart um, a few months ago that I was like, oh, next time, you know, I get the opportunity, this is what I'm going to share. All those went out the window when I got asked. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to share. And then this morning, like I was in the kitchen doing some stuff and this just kind of dropped in my heart. Like I actually remembered a story I'm going to share and then all of that kind of came out of that. Um, but I want to talk about fundamental faith because, you know, it's good to go back, you know, with us being word of faith, we kind of are like, oh, I've heard that before, heard that before. And you can kind of get used to, I'm way past that. You know, maybe that's not your initial thought, but that can kind of be the underlying thought is, oh, I'm past that. I've learned that. That's so basic, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what the kids like to say today. That's basic. Um, but you kind of get to that point where, um, it's good to go back and revisit those basics and re revisit the fundamentals of faith, the foundation. So um, I want us to kind of look at um, you know, the definition, meaning of those two words, fundamental faith. Um, so fundamental, when it's an adjective, um, it is the forming of a necessary base or core of central importance. And then when it's used as a noun, it's a central or primary rule or, or principle on which something is built. So it's our foundation, our foundation of faith. It's that core of our faith. And then, of course, faith, according to the dictionary, is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. The second definition is strong belief in God. And, of course, we know pastors shared this a few weeks ago or in the past few weeks. In the Greek, it's pistis, um, which is faith, belief, firm persuasion, assurance, firm conviction, faithfulness. So that's kind of like the foundation of what I want to talk about is getting into that, you know, fundamental faith, the simple faith, basic faith that's so important in our walk, in our daily walk with Christ. Um, so... Cap and I went to, um, back in the fall, we went down to Charlotte and saw Brother Copeland. Um, he was doing a victory, I forgot what he calls it, victory crusade or something like that. Um, but he was doing a meeting down there in Charlotte, and he said something like he, that I just, I was like, oh, that's really good. And so I was going back over my notes from that service because I wanted to find that exact quote. Um, but he said, what are you watching when you watch the World Series, the Super Bowl, etc.? He said, you are watching masters of the fundamentals. What, what wins championships is fundamentals. You know, they've mastered those fundamentals. So what wins championships is fundamentals of the game and not quitting. And, of course, we've heard, you know, I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Those are like basic fundamentals of faith. Um... But, you know, the same thing is true with faith. Fundamentals of faith is a lifelong thing. Learning and mastering the fundamentals of faith as a lifelong process that, you know, we're going from faith to faith and glory to glory. Um, so that's kind of the heart of what I want to talk about is, you know, just that basic faith that's in each of us as believers and building upon that faith. Um, so Romans... 117, and I'm going to read it in a couple of translations. All right, so I'm going to read it from the Amplified first. Um, for the gospel... A righteousness, for in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. And then um, in, I have it in my notes, from the Passion Translation, it says, This gospel unveils continual revelation of God's righteousness, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe, and it moves us from receiving through faith 
to the power of living by faith. This is what the scripture means when it says we are right with God through life-giving faith. I just love how it kind of puts it in those terms, that it moves us from receiving through faith, because we receive our salvation through faith. You know, we receive by faith, but it, it moves us into the power of living by faith. Not just receiving by faith, but just living in everything we do by faith. Um, so, and then the, ne- the next few verses I'm going to go into, I'm also going to read in some different translations. Um, but, you know, talking about those basics, living, life-giving faith, living in faith, and everything we do in faith, we live a life where there are no ifs ands or buts about it you know that's just basic foundational faith there are no ifs ands or buts about it um you know there are no ifs in basic fundamental faith um so we're going to look at mark 9 23 and i'm i'm going to read from the passion and the message um but first from the passion translation it says jesus what do you mean if if you are able to believe, all things are possible to the believer. Like, what do you mean, if? <laughs> you know? And then the message says, um, Jesus said, if, there are no ifs among believers, anything can happen. You know, there are no ifs. Am- I lo- like, I love how the message says some things, because it just is like, if, like, there are no ifs among believers. You know, like, wake up, what's your problem? Um, but, you know, there are no ifs among believers. Anything can happen. And that's just a basic core foundation of our faith is not doubting, you know, when things come along and and not, you know, well, if this happens, if it be God's will, you know, if blah, 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 blah. Like, no, Jesus said there are no ifs about it. You know, there are no. So. We're going to look at 1 John 5, 4 through 5. And again, I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. This is like this is like a translation I've discovered recently, and I just love the way it says some stuff. Like, sometimes I read it, I'm like, ooh, like that'll preach by itself. <laughs> so 1 John 5, 4 through 5. It says, you see, every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are we, the world conquerors, defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, who are we? We're world conquerors. We're defeating, you know, defeating its power. We are those that believe in in the Son of God you know, in Jesus. So, you know, our faith, a victorious power that triumphs over everything. And we're going to get more into that. Um, but the story that kind of came to me as I was thinking about what I was going to share about, and on one of the trips, we're coming back from Virginia on the private jet, you know, and um, so the, the pilot came into the cabin, and he was real... This, this guy is very, like, calm. You know, he's, like, the perfect person to have as a pilot. Like, he's real calm, you know, collected. He comes back there, and we're all kind of looking. Us young kids are looking at each other like, what's he doing back here? <laughs> you know, what's going on? <laughs> Why is the pilot in the back? <laughs> so he comes back, and he um, uh, kind of knelt down where um pastor was, and he's like, you know, don't be alarmed. But um, we're having some issues with, I think, the right engine or whatever term they use. One of the engines. Well, we had been going through some bumpy turbulence and stuff that had you a little uneasy already. And then he said, you know, <laughs> something's wrong with the engine. And you're like, uh-oh, <laughs> no, no. Because, not, you know, like not even a year before that, um, some ORU students and Ron Luce's daughter were all in a plane crash in Kansas. So, you know, that's like fresh in your mind is your small plane, you know, jet, one of the uh, jets isn't working or engines isn't working. Um, So he came back and told us that. 
And um, so we all prayed together, you know, just for everything to be fine. It was just a real simple, it wasn't, you know, anything crazy or whatever. It was just a real simple prayer. And then um, one of the team members that was younger, newer member of the, t- the team, um, he's <laughs> it kind of made me laugh <laughs> a little bit. But he said, I'm just glad the man of God is on this plane because I know God isn't going to let this plane crash with the man of God on it, <laughs> you know. Um, and it was really cute. But something that struck me was that Pastor immediately corrected that and ta- used it to teach a lesson. And um, I wrote down what he said. He said, no, 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 no. He said, now, each of you have faith, have enough faith and word in you to keep this plane up. He said, um, and he, he looked, I was like, kind of, he looked at me, you know, and then he kind of looked around at everybody as he was saying, he said, you have enough faith to trust God for this plane to land safely. You've been taught the word, you're full of faith, and I can sit back at rest knowing you have faith and how t- that you have faith and you know how to believe and trust in God. And it was like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, huh, that's something to think about. And it's one of those things that just kind of sticks with you. You know, I'll, I mean, it's been like six years or so now, but it's just one of those things that's kind of stuck with me is him saying that, like you have, like looking, you know, you have enough faith to keep this plane up. Because, you know, we tend to get that celebrity, you know, mentality or like the man of God mentality, the prophet of God mentality where you think, you know, oh, their faith is just so much more than mine. You know, like they can just believe God and it's just like, bam, you know, and here I can't even believe for, you know, this it seems like or whatever, you know. But um, it got me to, like, as I was reflecting upon that um, experience, it started stirring in me some other things to think about, about the measure of faith and that faith basics and stuff. And that's kind of where all this came from. So, you know, in reflecting on this, I wanted to look at what the Bible has to say. So in Romans 12, 3, it tells us that God has given every believer the measure of faith. Okay? So we're going to focus on that phrase a lot um, in the amount of time that we have left (laughs) to follow. But the phrase, the measure of faith, it tells us something very powerful about faith. The Christian walk and how it applies to you. Okay? So if you want your faith to grow, if you desire to trust God's word implicitly, and come to a place of knowing that you can trust God no matter what is going on around you, no matter what difficulties are going on around you, or no matter what rises, whether it be illness or financial issues or unemployment, whatever comes your way, if that's what you're you know, wanting to get to that point, there's good news. Because as a born-again believer, you have the ability um, that to make that desire a reality. You know, you have the faith, that measure of faith, to make that desire a reality. So I want us to look at three very important things. And I'm going to write a little bit. So there's going to be three things. All right, so the first one is that faith is for Christians. All right, so it is important to understand that, you know, Romans 12, 3, which I just talked about a little bit earlier, and the entire book of Romans, was written to believers. It's for Christians. It's for the church. Um, So it wasn't speaking to unbelievers. Now we can share things from, obviously from the word of God, for unbelievers, but it was written specifically to the church. So faith 
is for Christians. Um, it is for believers. It wasn't speaking to unbelievers. It was speaking to people who had accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Okay? Um, so in this passage, it's not saying that the measure of faith was given um, to every single person on the planet. Okay? It's saying that it was given to everyone that believes. Okay? So everyone that is a believer. Now, is it available to everyone on the planet? Yes. As soon as they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they are given the measure of faith. Okay? But something to, something to impor, uh, important to, you know, think about um, is, you know, if you've ever wondered, like, why unsaved friends or family, you know, they can't, maybe they don't understand your walk with Christ. Or, um, you know, they can't believe with you in agreement for healing or, you know, whatever you're believing for by faith. It's because they don't have the measure of faith. You know, they're an unbeliever, so they aren't walking in that yet, okay? We hope that they do get to that point. Um, so, um, and then Second Thessalonians 3.2 supports this. It talks about unreasonable and wicked men, um, and it's spoken, spoken about in this verse. It refers to unbelievers. They are the ones that are without faith, okay? Um, so, you know, just remember that, that faith is for the believer. It's for Christians. Now, because you have received Christ, you are a new creature. You're a new creation. And you have faith. You have the measure of faith given to you. And we know that by 2 Corinthians 5.17. Okay? All right. The second thing I want to talk about is number two. You have, let me get my book so I can see it better. You have the same faith as, anyone guess what I'm going to say? You have the same faith as what? Jesus. Jesus. Yep, so you have the same faith as Jesus. Like, what? <laughs> you have the same faith of Jesus. So there are, no, there are no different kinds of faith depending on who you are, you know, what role you play in the um, body of Christ. It may look like some people or seem like some people's faith is just so much bigger than yours and, you know, more powerful or stronger or bolder than your faith. But you have, you all have the same faith as Jesus. Now, there are people who develop that faith, but it doesn't mean that, you know, Mr. Dick's faith is weaker than Miss Perry's faith or, you know, whatever. We all have the same measure of faith, okay? Um, so you have in you that same, like, world-changing faith that others have. So don't think, you know, man, I'll never be like, I'm trying to think, like, Benny Hinn or, you know, Kenneth Hagin or Kenneth Copeland. Man, that must be wonderful to walk with God like that. I'll never be like that. You know, who, who am I? <laughs> that's 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 doubt and unbelief is what we call that all right that's hogwash <laughs> a good old southern colloquial expression um so you know don't think like that don't tear yourself down because the same faith that lives in kenneth copeland the same faith that lived in kenneth e hagan the same faith that lives in pastor hagan is the same faith that's in jessica taylor Capel and Miss Carrie and Miss Ellie and Mr. Dick and Cap and Mr. Joe. It's the same faith. So there's no difference. There's no like ranking in faith, in the measure of faith. All right? So um, the measure of faith is the same for every believer, and it is the same faith that Jesus possessed. Okay? So that's our second point. Um, different believers may develop their faith. And they may strengthen their faith over time. They do this by the word 
but their faith is no different than yours. You have the same capability. All right? So um, we're going to move into number three. This is our last of the three points. Of strengthening it. Now, um, actually, let me take a step back. So we're going to look at Romans 10, 17. You guys know this verse. I know you know this verse. <laughs> If I can get my page to not stick together. All right, and then I'm reading from Amplified, so it might be a little different if you're reading from KGV, K, K, KJV. <laughs> um, so faith comes by hearing what is told, and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. Or I think um, King James says, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? So, um, you know, if you want to be a person that is a person of confident, bold faith, like someone you look up to, someone that you esteem, um, who has strong, world-changing faith, then you must spend time reading, studying, meditating in the word. Um, the only way... To achieve the strength of faith you desire is in here. Okay? That's the only way is in the Word. All right? And I know this seems like basic stuff, but that's what we're talking about is fundamental faith. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's good to go back and look at the basics. <laughs> um, if you guys listen to podcasts, I highly recommend, like, Beth Jones, The Basics with Beth. I've been listening to her since, I guess, the start of the year. I've really been, like, listening to her podcast, like, on the way to work and stuff. And her ministry is the basics. So it's the basics with Beth. But it's just so good. It's like, oh, wow, never thought of it that way, you know? <laughs> like, it's really good. So um, anyway, that was just a little snippet. Um, so in addition to studying the Word, reading the Word, meditating on the Word, it's absolutely okay and helpful to listen to more mature. <laughs> what is that? Is something dying out there? <laughs> um, more mature you know, believers or um, ministers in the faith who have that faith that you like, really esteem and you want to, you know, walk in like them. It's good to listen to their preaching and teaching. So get some, you know, get teaching tapes, of course, to help you in developing that faith. But know that your main and only final source is this, the Word of God, okay? Um, so, because those, you know, hearing someone else's perspective of things, hearing what they've gone through, hearing, you know, their victory stories and all those kinds of things, it stirs something up in you. And it gets you to a point of, oh, they went through that? That's what I'm going through right now, you know, kind of a thing. Or, oh, man, like, they dealt with that too. You know, it's not just me. And, they like, look at them. Look at the way they walk in faith and boldness today, like, Okay, so it's not over for me, you know, kind of a thing. It stirs faith in you. And that's what we want is we want to go back and we want to listen to people. We want to read the word and read passages that stir that faith in us, that build and, and help us revisit those faith basics and those fundamentals of faith, okay? So don't let anyone tell you, whether it's fellow believers, um, you know, the enemy, your, your own thoughts, you know, who knows, like our own thought life. It's a battleground, you know. We can be our worst enemy. So don't let anyone tell you that you're weak in faith or that you're weaker than someone else in faith. You have the same measure of faith as Jesus. You have the same measure of faith as Kenneth Hagin. You have the same measure of faith as Kenneth Copeland. You know, all those people 
you have the same measure of faith. So don't ever let the enemy rob you of your place in the body of Christ by letting you listen to lies and believe those lies that you're weak and that you don't have enough faith. Okay? So just stir that up. Um, Because we don't want to be, you know, we don't want to be crippled. We don't want to be ineffective because we're held captive by lies that we've believed. All right? So you have the same measure of faith as Jesus. And when you come to the full realization of this, you will be amazed at what God can do through you and in you, you know, what he can use you for, things that you, you know, you maybe haven't even thought of yet. Dreams you haven't even dreamed yet. But when you allow yourself to be surrendered to that and you begin to go back to these fundamentals and the foundation of your faith and, you know, fortify it and rebuild it, you know, and, and strengthen that foundation and strengthen the core of your, you know, faith, the core of your belief, strengthen it, you're going to get to a place where you're going to be walking in things with God that you never thought were possible, you know, or you maybe hadn't even thought of that yet, but he knew where he was taking you. So that's just an encouragement. Don't be held captive by those lies that your faith is weak or that you're not so-and-so. You know, you have that same measure of faith in you. Um, you know, it's kind of the theme tonight, isn't it? the measure of faith. You have been dealt the same measure of faith. It's already given to you, you know. As soon as you believe, you receive it, okay? Um, so, you know, I kind of want to leave you with this. Like, you know, how do we live as a champion of faith? As someone that moves mountains and speaks into impossible situations with bold faith. We do what every champion does. We continually practice and revisit the fundamentals. We don't dismiss the basics because the basics are what our foundation is built upon. And the basics or fundamentals of faith are what make the victory ours. So champions, this goes back to that story that Brother Copeland told, champions are masters of the fundamentals. So you want to be a champion in this life? You want to be a champion, you know, in your walk with Christ? Master those fundamentals. You know, go back and revisit those fundamentals and and begin to practice them. It's just like if you've ever played a sport, I you know, I used to play sports in high school. And, you know, what is practice? It's repeating drills over. Are we really going to do this drill again today? I am so tired of throwing, you know, free throws or, you know, kicking, you know, <laughs> you know, from the from this line or whatever, you know. But that's that's it is those drills and going back over those fundamentals and doing those things. And sometimes you look silly doing it, you know. I think back to some of the drills that we did, and I was like, we look so silly, <laughs> you know. And at the time, especially as a high school girl, you're like so silly doing this I look so stupid you know but that coach knew something that maybe you didn't know doing that drill over and over again was developing muscle memory for those things and it was developing things that when you're in the middle of the game in the heat of competition it's something that's just going to come as second nature to you you know that because you've practiced it over and over again just like with faith, as you practice those drills, those fundamentals over and over again, you're developing your faith muscle and strengthening your faith muscle, and you're creating that muscle memory, so to speak, in your faith that when the challenges come in life and the heat of the battle comes, you already have it, and it's just like second nature to you. And you respond not even realizing, you know, because it's just second nature to you. Isn't God good? Amen. He's given us everything we need to live victorious. Amen. So um, the last little thing I have in here with simple faith is victorious faith. Okay, so simple faith is a victorious faith. We try to make things so difficult and so hard, but it's just 
it's simple, you know. We we get into that's when you start getting into philosophy and theor, you know theorizing and all that kind of stuff and philosophizing, and we make things difficult when faith is basic. It's simple, and all we have to do is look in here, and we have the answers to everything that life throws at us, you know. Um, so you know, going on that, just like a praise report, a few weeks before the school year ended, I got called into a meeting and told that my position was being eliminated. And um, if you don't know anything going on with the district right now, with the county, they're, they're doing these, like, academies, these specialized academies and stuff. And um, because of that, they needed to find funding to fund them. So how do they fund it? It's one of the ways is cutting some people's positions. So, so I get pulled into a meeting and told, you know, I hate to tell you this, but your position's one of the ones that's been eliminated. There were little tears, you know, kind of came a little bit. I was like, thank you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're like, are you okay to go back to class? Mm -hmm, I'll be fine. <laughs> I said, I'm actually better to go back to class and not think about it, <laughs> you know, to go back to my students. Um, so anyway, we went through a few weeks of <laughs> what's going to happen next year, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I just kind of had this peace. And I couldn't, you know, I, I can't explain it other than that life of faith and being at peace on the inside. Um, does that mean I said everything perfect every single day? No. <laughs> there may have been times where I was like, I don't know what we're going to do next year, you know, and then you have to repent, you know, kind of a thing. But um, anyway, fast forward, last week, school ended on Wednesday was our last work day. Um, so I had started having, I had been applying like crazy for almost a month, you know, when I had found out and wasn't getting anything, and then I'd contact people, and oh, I'm sorry, the position's already been filled. Oh, okay, thank you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, wonderful. Um, so I went in for some interviews, and then on my way to one of the interviews, which was one of the jobs I really wanted, because if you know anything about me, you know I love art. And I, since before I started teaching, I wanted to be an art teacher. That's, I was actually going back to school to do that. Like. Art is my passion. When we go on vacations, we go to art museums. You know, we try to fit it in, or we go to something artistic. Because I love art. I love the history of it. So anyway, um, so they called and said, we've decided to go a different direction. And that was, like, the job I really wanted. So I had to go into this other interview, you know, and whatever. Um, and so then last Wednesday night, we were at dinner, and I saw another job popped up. So I'm, like, applying for it between dinner and on the way to church, you know, applying for it and everything. I get um, emailed the next morning, inviting me in for an interview that afternoon. Go in for the interview, and it went really well. And it was for an art position. It went really well. And then Friday morning, I got sent an email that you've been recommended for hire for this position. And yesterday, I got my contract, and I'm going to be teaching art next year. So I go from... Your job has been eliminated, which, you know, I was thankful for my job, but it wasn't fully my passion. You know what I mean? And it's, it's different. Like, they, I could, there, were things I, there were cool things I could do with it. But what I really wanted to do is what I'm going to get to do next year. And isn't that just awesome that you go from no job to in a matter of, like, 24 hours or so, it's completely changed to... You're getting to do your dream job, <laughs> you know. So that's just, you know, working on that, your, you know, your faith and being in a position where when those challenges arise, you have that peace on the inside to know this is what we have to do. And no matter what it looks like, we're going to keep speaking faith and we're going to keep walking in faith. And when we don't, we repent, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so every opportunity, you know, um, there's some quote, and I might be messing it up, but there's a quote by a famous minister that um, said, you know, when, like, things happen, it's just another opportunity to prove God's word works. I forgot who said it. I've heard it a thousand times. 
But when those situations happen, it's just another opportunity to prove God word, God's word works, that your faith works in those situations. All right? Um, so that's all I have for this tonight. I hope it blessed you. Um, I had eight pages of notes because normally I come in here with like three or four pages and <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm good. And then I blow through them really fast, <laughs> like rapid fire. I'm like, okay, that went a little bit faster than I expected. So I made sure I was ready for <laughs> my quick talking. Um, all right, so offering. I'm going to do the offering. Do you know how to put that up on the screen? Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so if you are giving in here, it's the same, it's like a little diet, like it looks like an art thing, and there's a slideshow. And you can go through the slides. He's going to work on putting that up on the screen for those of you watching online. Um, if you're giving in here, you can give via check, cash, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm, that's true. You, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good a good analogy too with music. Did you get that pulled up? Okay, awesome. So if you're watching online, the information's on the screen. Um, and if you are giving in here tonight, you can go ahead and receive that, and I'll pray over the offering. Father God, we just thank you for tonight's service, and we thank you for the word that was given. And I thank you that it just blesses people's hearts and that they were able to receive whatever you had for them to receive in tonight's message or to maybe, you know, see things in a different light or be encouraged in a new way um, in their walk of faith with you. And Father God, I thank you for this offering. I thank you that um, as people give, that the devourer is rebuked for their, for, for their sake and that they lend to many, that they do not borrow and that they prosper in everything that they set their hands to as they are obedient to your word and to give to, it, to the kingdom to help this church and to help this ministry accomplish all that you've called us to accomplish here and in the world. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, and we will see you Sunday morning.